Hello, my name is Joanna Robinson. I am... A writer for Vanity Fair, a podcaster. I do Castle Kings and Storm of Spoilers, but you are not here to see me, right? Right. I know, I know. You're here to see a hero of the long night. Uh, someone who loves his sister very much. <laughs> the world's greatest father uncle. <laughs> An oath keeper. Yeah. Some call him a kingslayer, but we prefer to call him Sir Jamie Lannister. It is Nikolai Coaster Waldo. <laughs> Hey, wow, thanks for coming. That's amazing. Some call him Kingslayer. Some do. We don't acknowledge that. I think right? that was one of the first times I realized that the show was going well. I was in New York after season one, and uh, I was out with some friends in a bar, and suddenly he was like, Kingslayer! And I was like, what? <laughs> Drinks on me! And I was like, yes, this is, <laughs> this is good. Work. Um, so I want to start by asking you, I know that you've uh, been asking some folks why they're here at the con, what they're enjoying about Con of Thrones, and I was wondering what your perception of, if this con, just being here for a day and a half, has changed your perception of the Game of Thrones fandom in any way, seeing the people face to face, seeing people here on the ground. <laughs> no, it, it, when you get to tell them how much you love them. No, but, I mean, I, I, it, no, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's so beautiful and good looking and wonderful and kind and no, but, but, um, no, you are. Uh, no, but it's, it's that thing about a convention just for Game of Thrones. I, I thought how many people would show up for that and, and I, I, I mean, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and, uh. It, it, it does, you're just grateful to be part of something and it's, uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me how the show has, has traveled and how it's uh, touched uh, just, not just us who made the show but so many people around the world and it, it really is a privilege and it's, it's something that's out of, of our control in, in a good way um, because it's, it's, it's uh, I mentioned that yesterday but I think at the core we as human beings, we need each other, we need to come together, and, and for anything that brings us together like this, it's a, it's a real positive thing and a wonderful thing. And I'm just thrilled to be here. Yeah. And uh, then I want to just... But if anyone had told me that it would take me uh, to do a part where I was having sex with my sister to experience that, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have... <laughs> <laughs> you still would have done it. I would have uh, done it, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about um, a scene that uh, a lot of people name as their favorite of the last season. It is the knighting of Brienne of Tarth. Yeah. It's a beautiful scene. It's, it's, uh, and and uh, Brian Cockman wrote this. And, and for some reason, uh, uh, Brian has, has written some of my favorite scenes. I mean, for Jamie in, in the series. Uh, he also wrote Kiss by Fire, which was a scene... Uh, in a bathtub. We did a, we did a debate among uh, all the attendees the other day about the best episode of Game of Thrones and Kiss by Fire won. Oh, wow. Yeah, number well, one. Probably my so. favorite as well. But I think that the episode two of, of this season was, was beautiful. I really, David Nutter, the director, did such an amazing job of, of, of capturing all these, um, these wonderful people that we got to know for so long. Uh, characters spending time with each other that they hadn't before. And then, of course, this moment of, uh, of Jamie uh, just suddenly getting this idea, and I think maybe, you know, being spurred on by uh, that big red-headed hunk of a man <laughs> taking, taking some of the spotlight. Well, sometimes it's funny. I was just reading this book about... <laughs> it's a whole different... I'm, I, I have to apologize. I have a tendency of going off track. I'll come back. <laughs> uh, maybe not. 
I was just reading this thing about, did you know that Yale didn't uh, accept women until 1969? I didn't know that. And that's not, it wasn't just Yale, so many universities. And um, the principal at Yale was this very progressive guy. And he was, he was, he was in many, many ways at the very forefront of change, of, of civil rights movements. And, but when it came to including women, he was like, why? He just didn't get it. He wasn't a bad person, he just didn't get it. My point to this is that sometimes change happens because someone suddenly stands up and goes, hang on a second, this has to change, which is what Tormund did in that scene, when he suddenly goes, why, that's fucked up. Why can't a woman be a, you're a fucking better fighter than anyone else, you should be a knight. And then the, the penny dropped for Jamie, and he went, hang on a second, They're in, in, the, in the rule book that he suddenly went through in his mind, like there's nothing about women can't do this, so I'll do it, and I'll score an easy point on that account. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it is a beautiful scene, because it's, uh, it's obviously so much more than just uh, her being you know, included as, as one of the gang, but it's also, you know, as when, when he gives her the armor and uh, the sword, and it's, it's a declaration of love. Yeah. Um, obviously, you knew that that was something special when you filmed it, but did you know, did you expect it would get such a reaction from the fans? Um, I, I know, I was hoping people would like it. Because uh, I liked it, I, I thought that, uh, you know, I saw what Gwendolyn was doing, so I thought that if the camera captured that, it, I th you know, I, yeah, I actually did think that people would like, like that scene, because it's a beautiful, beautiful scene, and she's amazing, and it, the smile on her face, oh. Um, I like to call David Nutter an emotional assassin because I've talked to a lot of Game of Thrones actors who say sort of right before camera rolls, he walks up and he'll like say something and then they'll just start crying and he goes, okay, action. Um, did he say anything to you when filming this scene that you were like, Jesus, David, where did that come from? Why? N no, he just gives me water all the time. It's true, he has, uh, <laughs> it's his trick. He has uh, bottles of water for every actor and I'll constantly like, hey, take a sip. You gotta, you gotta drink, you gotta stay hydrated. And they go, all right. <laughs> and I think that sometimes it's, uh, one of the things that I need to do as an actor, because I, I like to be prepared. I like to know what I'm doing, uh, which is a good thing. Um, but then I also need to, just before you shoot, Try to trick, I have to trick myself into not knowing anything. And I think maybe that's kind of what he's doing. He's like doing something which has, take some water, what? Action. And then you, for a second, because you know what you're doing and you want it to be spontaneous. You want to capture that moment of, of I'm, oh, I'm looking into her eyes for the first time. I'm, 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 I've just came up with this idea. This is not the 48th take because we've done 20 angles. Because uh, uh, that's what you do on Game of Thrones. You shoot, you shoot a lot of coverage so it, it's it, that's the the trick so um yeah that's why so i think that's water bottle trick the bottle trick yeah but i know he never said anything disturbing to me what did he say to to i'm curious now well like uh he I feel told, left out <laughs> when sophie turner had to film the scene where she's looking at theon on the pyre he was like now he'll never know that he was so how important he was to you and blah blah blah. And Sophie Turner started crying. Or to Sophie uh, Turner was crying a lot last <laughs> season. She would be like, oh, "This is the last time I'm going to see that washroom." <laughs> okay, so maybe it wasn't David Nutter's. <laughs> it was just any old washroom would do. I mean, anything <laughs> would make her burst into tears. I mean, and I get it, but yeah. Um, all right, have you, um, <laughs> have you heard uh, that Ramin Javadi, composer Ramin Javadi, put um, the season two track, I Am Her, She Is Mine, which is uh, the wedding song that plays when Rob and Talisa get married, he put it into the music that plays when Brienne writes Jamie's entry into the white book. Yeah, had you heard that? What do you think of this idea? Ramin says, 
uh, it was just a hint of their relationship if they had stayed together, if he was still alive, what it could have been, what they could have become. That's why I put that in there. I was amazed some people picked up on it. So yeah, th we're always listening, Game of Thrones fans are. Well, that's another thing I've realized. Uh, I'm in a room with uh, a lot of people who know a lot more about this show than I do. <laughs> Which is great, so you can educate me. Uh, I will join the, the gang now. Um, no, I did not know that. Uh, but I, 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 uh, I also, um, I have to say, was, uh, was very moved by that scene. It's a beautiful moment. And I love those scenes that are not without words, where it's just... It's such a payoff because we've, uh, f I mean, if you paid attention through the series, you know the significance of what she's doing. And you've had those moments with, uh, was it Joffrey who was a little shit about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. An awfully short entry before she filled it in. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's the beauty. It is, you know, and, and, you know, he was, it was important to him to do a good job, right? He, that, yeah. So... Uh, it was a source of, of pain, I think, for him that he, that he only had, like, blank pages. So, yeah, it was, it was a very romantic relationship in the end um, with Jamie and Brienne. Well, let's talk about the end of that romance really quickly, the, the courtyard goodbye, which you tweeted out. Well, I have a secret. I can tell yeah. it now. Right, you know that you see me right off when, you, when I leave um, the courtyard? We shot that at 1 a.m. and um, right when you, when I leave frame, there was a big green screen at the end, so I had to turn left. It was the last shot of the night, and uh, the horse fell. It just slipped, so I went down like it was it was brutal. So you had you had all the producers, everyone just running like because they heard it, and then they just saw this horse come out like. Ugh. And uh, I, w I was lucky. I mean, I got my feet out of the stirrups and I just messed up my knee, but um, it was very dramatic. <laughs> but the funny thing is the med set medic, usually on a, on a movie set, they don't get to do much. I mean, they hand out vitamin pills and, and, and Band-Aids, usually. This was like Friday night. He was ready to go home and suddenly this happened. One of the m main actors could might have broken his neck or something. He was like, I thought he was having a, a, a heart attack. Like, oh, oh my God, Jess, oh, are you all right? Oh, Jesus Christ, oh my God, oh my God. You guys just lie down. I mean, and I was like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. I mean, is the horse okay? No, 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 we got it. But, um, but, but, okay, let's go back to the scene. So that, that was the question. Uh, but I mean, oh, and then just the reason I haven't talked about it, because sometimes people get, um, the fact was, it was just a freak accident. Uh, we had the best horse wranglers, you know. It just happened. So the, no, one's mis no one did a, made a mistake and uh, no one The horse was is blown. fine and everyone's fine. fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the scene, you said, how, the scene yes, you, what was the question? Well, someone, had, someone wrote an article that just said basically a lot of people, they felt that a lot of people misunderstood that scene and you tweeted it out and said, yeah, under, misunderstood that scene, that's right. No, no, I, what I, is, what does no, that mean? What I, I think I, I, I think what I, what I thought about that article was that he, that was the intention. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying anyone's wrong. If you, if you, if you feel that uh, what she did then, if your experience is one thing, I'm not going to say that's wrong, that's your experience. I'm just saying the intention. The same goes back to, not that I want to start that whole debate, but the scene in front of Joffrey's dead body with me and Lena. The intention was that there was two people in extreme pain that needed each other in a way that had became very physical, as most of their relationship had been or was. It was never intended to be a violent uh, act of, well, you know what I mean. But, I, but I'm not saying that if you have that, ex if that's what you see, then that's what, I mean, that's fine. So that was my point. What, what, what he wrote in that article was, was um, what, then what did you feel the intention? The intention of our scene and what I thought was so beautiful is that she is, of course, in... She doesn't want him to leave. I mean, she knows... I mean, they went into this with open eyes. She knew about this other woman, right? Right. Um, but um, obviously she believes that he's, he's, 
he's left Cersei. And she wants to believe that. Um, and she wants him to live. And I think that's also, she wants, you know, she knows that he's a good guy. Well, she believes that she knows that. And she, uh, when he says, you know, I'm, um, I'm terrible, I'm an evil, I'm as evil as my sister, I've done all these things, that proves that I'm not worthy, basically. I'm not worthy of you. And, she, and that is how I see the scene, that's her, the pain for her is that she can persuade him, she can make, make him believe that he is good enough and that he is, uh, he's, that he is worthy of her love. So that's why I, that's, that's how I, that's why I, I mean, that's what I read into, I think, Gwendolyn, and it's been very important to her, I know, that she does not want to be, uh, she, I mean, she, Brienne is so important to her that, that she would hate, and she hates if people think that suddenly it's just a, you know, a damsel in distress, and uh, oh, God, she's crying because the guy left her. It's, it's, it's not that, that was not the intention for sure. But she's crying for Jamie because she can't convince him that he well, deserves it's, to I mean, live. Of course, it's a, it's a mix. I mean, like, she, does, she loves him. She doesn't want him to, to leave, and she doesn't want him to die. And, and, and she doesn't want him, it's a mix. You know, she doesn't want him to go down to, to, to this other woman. But most of all, it's like, you're wrong. You, you're better than this. I know you're better than this. So please. Um, but I think... It's, it's interesting because I think what we all love about the show is also what sometimes is really frustrating is that it's, it's complicated. It's never just black or white. It's never just good or evil. And that's what we've loved from the, of the show from the beginning. And that's what pissed people off in, throughout all the seasons. <laughs> you know, it's been like this. And that Stark died, it was like, fuck you, HBO. <laughs> we are never ever going to watch this show again. And then they stopped watching. And then more people watched it. <laughs> and, and that's, and, and I don't know, and I think, I mean, I think that's great that we want to have, have it be complicated. And I think maybe at the end, there was the hope that could it just be, just, could we just have a happy ending? I know we asked for all the other stuff up until now, but could we just have a happy ending? Now we're ready for happy. Yeah. Well, on that note then, what do you think are, uh, if there are any, what do you think are some fair critiques of the final season and what do you find unfair? Okay, now you have to walk me through the critiques because I, I, I tend to ignore the bad, bad stuff I read. <laughs> no, you just, it, there are some people who are, were dissatisfied with how the show ended or, well, you really want me to sit up here and say like, here's no, what no, people no. are saying. No, 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 fair critique, no, no, like, uh, so I, so, no, I, of course I've heard some. Uh, one critique point was it was too fast. That it was only six episodes, or 13, and uh, we needed more time for this to happen. Um, yeah, fair enough. I mean, you wanted more. I would love to have done end. another season, but, but I think that the, the people would have, the crew would have died. It was so hard to shoot this last thing. Um, the critique of episode three being too dark, um, I, it, it was really dark, and uh, and and I mentioned this yesterday. But uh, the thing is, and I actually spoke to Dan uh, Dan Weiss about this because it really pissed him off as well. Because uh, you gotta believe me, they they did everything they could to make this the most exciting uh, action sequence ever made, put on film, TV, anything. So to wake up and see the, the Twitter or whatever talking about, I can't see it, was really, seriously, it was a surprise to everyone. Because it, it was dark, but it was made in a way that you should be able to see it. What happens is was, uh, well, one reason that I was told is that, because I spoke to people, they, they had a big screening uh, that day in, 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 uh, in Hollywood at the uh, Chinese theater. Roman Chinese theater, yeah. And people were blown away. It was just so... It looked so great up on the big screen. I was in Sudbury, Canada, watching on a television monitor, and, and, and I, I knew it, but even then I was like, who is that? I can't see. <laughs> Apparently, Netflix did that, used to do this, or did this before. HBO used to crash all the time, with high, a lot of traffic. 
So they were like, what's Netflix doing? Well, Netflix is just lowering, lowering the bandwidth. When you do that, you lose quality of image and, and blacks become grays and the whole come, becomes muddy and you can't see it. So I guess what HBO is trying to let me, um, let you know, just get the Blu-ray guys. <laughs> but that's, no, that's, <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's, that, that was not that was my, but I guess because uh, it shouldn't be like that and I so it is a fair critique and I uh, I agree with that uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to boost sales um, I heard there's a lot of great extra features on the blu-ray there's a whole there's a whole uh, we did a whole it was ridiculous we did a whole Conan did a whole talk show with us uh, in Belfast with the whole crew as audience just for the DVD extras just the crew as the audience yeah okay I was like, how did they do that without letting it get out? I see the audience was just the crew. Yeah. Uh huh. So anyway, other other uh, critique. Yeah. Moment. Uh, okay. So what else? Uh, Cersei wasn't killed by Jamie. I mean, come, that would have been. I mean, imagine if that had happened. The outcry. So f obvious. Uh, God. I saw that coming. God, man, we saw that coming years ago. Um, <laughs> Or the one that I kind of imagined, I thought would happen was like, well, Arya's going to kill Jamie, and then she's going to be Jamie, and she's going to kill Cersei. Go, <laughs> but she'd already done that, so it would be a repeat of something we'd already seen. Um, you, I mean, listen, you can. You, it, you don't have to defend. No, no, I'm not trying to defend. I'm just saying that's the thing with with these things. I think at the core, there's also. I thought, I thought they did a great job with the way they ended it. And, and obviously I'm biased, but I really did. I also think that if you really, really love the show, you don't want it to end. And just the mere fact that it's ending is pissing you off. Now that it's all said and done, do you have, is there one scene throughout all the years that was, that stands out as your favorite, this is the iconic Jamie moment, this is the moment I want my character to be remembered for? Um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, there's, I mean, uh, it's been an, it's an amazing character. It's been, I've so, I've, I have been very, very lucky with so many great scenes. Um, I, I mean, I, I obviously the, the big scenes like the kiss by fire in the bathtub. That's an amazing scene. So because you, you finally get to you know show he gets to say what he hasn't been able to say to anyone. Um, also, someone sent me this. <laughs> this sounds really stupid. There was, but sometimes there was a compilation of scenes of Jamie's scenes, and I was like, I was just looking at it, I was like, geez, I've been so, so unbelievably lucky. And you forget about these little, you know, so I saw all these scenes, there's also the scene just before um, the bathtub with Kyburn, Anton, who does an amazing job with Kyburn, by the way. I would have seen him have more of a death, but then there were so many characters you would have seen him. He just got shoved to death, anyway, basically. It was so brutal. <laughs> Get out of the way, <laughs> Um, that scene when he's uh, doing surgery on my, uh, that's and it, no, there's, I mean, and really it's not for me. I mean, and then at the end of the day, there, there's the memory of, of like, that thing I talked about yesterday, well, you weren't here yesterday, but there's this behind the scenes thing of a, a thing me and t Peter did, Dinklage, when his trial scene, we, we thought we were being really funny, so we did a dance up the aisle, we laughed. No, that's a, that's a very famous gif. Oh, okay, okay. It's a well, very, very famous gif of well, the dance. That, that, it lives that on. That moment was just, it was so much, I mean, <laughs> I would say it's the, it, it shows what it was like to be on Game of Thrones. And that's, that's what I remember more than, than you know, um, anything, really. Did you watch the last Watch documentary that came out? Yes. Yes. Um, there's this great shot of you from the first table read. We've got like 
The long hair, the backwards hats, all. By all the way, hair. I've never dyed my hair. It's just uh, apparently there's a, someone been asking me, so why did you stop dyeing your hair? And I was like, no, I never dyed my hair. It's just, it's just age. <laughs> And, uh, and then when it's long, when my hair is really long, it gets sunburned or whatever you call it, sun kissed. <laughs> yes. So anyway, the question yeah, was... Yeah, the first table read, what memories do you have from it? I remember Harry Lloyd who played... Um, Viserys. The brother, yes, Viserys. <laughs> he was... Um, there was a few actors, the characters that weren't there. And uh, so he was like, no, no, I can, I can, I can do those. And, I, and you know, it's a table read, and, and you're a little intimidated by, it's just like, it's so fresh, and you, you don't want to commit too much, uh, because you don't want to hit a false note. So most, will, will you will read it in a, in a good, solid way, but you won't go too... You're playing it safe. You're, you're playing it safe, yeah. 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 And mo we all did, except Harry Lloyd. <laughs> but he was so fucking good. And every character he did. And you just sat there going, who is this fucking asshole? <laughs> and, uh, and, we, and we all did. Sorry, it was, my phone was buzzing. Um, my wife is trying to get in. Uh, let me just see that she's not getting locked out somehow. Yeah, could someone from this organization go, because uh, the hotel is kicking us out now. So could someone do They're on it, about they're that? on it. <laughs> oh, love the Mischief team. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> So Harry Lloyd was showboating and making you all yeah, look bad. No, no, he was, <laughs> he was just being, he was just doing his job. And we were just thinking, oh, wow, he's so damn good. And he was good. I mean, he was amazing, wasn't he? I mean, as the uh, brother, he was so good. But what I also, I remember also that they had three cameras on. Uh, it felt like a production and it was just a, it's just a table read, guys. No one's going to get cut. Uh, two actors lost their jobs there. Yeah. Such is life. Uh, and then memories from the last table read. Well, apart from Kit Harrington sobbing. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. It was, I was sitting next to Brian Cockman. He, he was um, the writer, and he was reading all the stage directions. And he loves the show. He loves the world, as we all do. Um, but he, <laughs> I remember he was... We're getting towards the end, and then he came to the. Um, we're getting close to the end of Jamie and Cersei, and he was like, "Okay, here we go." Because <laughs> he was. Uh, I mean, he. As I said, he. he I think he, he. You know, he's written amazing stuff for for Jamie and um, and and Cersei. So, I, and and he loves all the characters. So he was just. It became. Now he had to. It became real. They're dying. We all. He told, all he told me you, you reached out and squeezed his shoulder, and that's what it took to get him through that. Yeah, yeah. Give him the old the Nikolai old. shoulder squeeze. <laughs> Got him through. No, but he's, a, he's such a. I mean, his story is also amazing. There's so many. I mean, that's one of the things. You know, you do a show for so long. When we came to Belfast, they didn't have. They had a studio, but, but they didn't have much of, of, of crews and, and whatnot. And. and in ten, 10 years of, of this production, you've, we've trained a whole, I mean, they have so many uh, amazing crew members that have gone through the ranks, have gone through 10 years of, of training at the highest level. And it's just, it's just and you, you know, families have been made, you know, kids have gone, I mean, it's, it's been, it's that kind of thing where you go, this is amazing. And with Brian, you know, he started out as being the, 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 the boyfriend of, of, of David Benioff's nanny, and now, He's, he's running one of the biggest shows on Amazon, I think. So it's, it's, it's a pretty good. 
He's done well. He's done well He's done for well. himself. Uh, we are in a minute going to open up the uh, for audience questions. So if you guys want to start lining up there in an orderly fashion. <laughs> in an orderly fashion. <laughs> uh, and while you do that. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to ask another question, but now that I see how long that line is, I will just let you guys get started. Uh, go for it. Hi, so I'm a disabled Air Force veteran, and I have really close friends who are Danish wounded warriors who compete at Prince Harry's Invictus Games. So I just wanted to see if you would mind just doing a quick shout out for your Danish wounded warriors. Did you get that? Do you think you got that? I think I did, but do you mind doing it no, in the microphone real quick? So det her det er til, uh, til deltager, danske deltagere i Invictus uh, Games. Uh, tusind tak for at I for før, at I har været uh, jeres service, som man siger. Og så held og lykke og prøv prøv. Ha' det godt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. As uh, one of those who were at Game of Thrones from the beginning, I was wondering if you had any interesting stories or um, discussions that you had with George R. R. Martin that you wouldn't mind sharing about your character or um, any in general? I've never talked to George R. Oh. R. Martin about Jamie Lannister. Oh, okay. Um, but I've, I've, I've spoken to him, you know, about other stuff, but, but for some reason it never came up. And I think in, in the beginning it was also, um, it was kind of a choice, both I think his choice to not get uh, in the way of, uh, of, the, of the television show. Because obviously he's been living with these characters and they all look, I mean he said himself the only one who kind of resembled the, his idea was, was Peter. Um, and I think all the rest of us were just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, he, he's, he, I think he got used to, to, to me as Jamie in, in the end. I'm actually going to go uh, to Santa Fe in October uh, to, to one of these. And I think I'm going to have a uh, go see his, he has, he's got a, mo a movie theater there. Yes. Uh, the Sean Cocteau, I think. Yes. And I think we're going to screen a movie there. <laughs> one of my movies. Oh, awesome. So s stop by. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Nikolai. Uh, I had a question about one of your co-stars. Uh, I felt like the greatest scene stealer of the whole series was uh, Mr. Charles Dance. And they said, uh, I've heard that the first scene he shot was with you in the tent skinning the stag. I was just wondering, do you have any particular memories about that day or I remember going home that day. We were sharing a car back and uh, I was asking him about how long he was going to be on the show, and he was like, well, darling, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I have, I think it's going to be another, th uh, this season, and maybe, I don't know. And I said, I, th I think, what did your agent say? I mean, are you going to come back next season? I don't know, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but Charles, it's a, it's a pretty, I mean, I big think show. it's going to be big, and you could, you know, do well on this. I mean, <laughs> and he said, really? <laughs> And then he got on the phone to his agent, he's like, darling, everything is darling, by the way. And I, that's one thing I learned from Charles, is like, because you meet so many people, and, and he said, listen, I gave up years ago trying to remember names, so now it's just darling. <laughs> darling, you look wonderful. Um, so he called his agent, and then he was like, oh, really? Oh, wow. No, apparently I have three years. So. <laughs> and the scene was great, but I don't remember much from the scene. Uh, another quick question, uh, who is your favorite cast member to grab a pint with after the show, like go have a piss? Well, they're all great. <laughs> the only one you shouldn't try to compete with is, is Jason Momoa, because that's going <laughs> to kill you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks. Hi, thanks for coming. Uh, speaking of scene stealers, uh, I've seen um, reports that your fight on the beach with uh, Johan Pilou Right, uh, your fellow Dane uh, was called the Dane Bowl. That's what it said in the script. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, there were 
There were a lot of very funny, uh, Dan and David put in all these things throughout the script. Um, Kit Harrington was always something with his hair. He fluffs his hair in the end. But yes, it was the, 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 the Dane Bowl to end all Dane Bowls. Well, I saw, I saw a brief footage where, I guess you were working out the logistics and the, 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 you know, the positions and so forth, and you were speaking in Danish to each other, it appeared. Well, that's uh, how we communicate in Denmark. <laughs> fair enough. Fair, fair enough. But was that, was that purely because it was more comfortable and just easier for you? I mean, did anyone else, I, I assume no one else on the set understood what you were saying. We uh, don't work with anyone who don't understand Danish. It's, uh, it's in the contract. <laughs> okay. It has taken a while to get enough crew members to understand that rule. Wow. No, I mean, it, it's some, I mean, I don't know what the footage is, but I mean, we, we, um, uh, he was we occasionally he was... speak a, a mother tongue, and then uh, if other people need to be included, we will, we will speak the, uh, the foreign Whatever this is, yeah. tongue. Yeah. Understandable, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. So I was wondering, are there any events or characters like maybe Stannis that you wish that you had the opportunity to work with that you didn't? Any characters on, on Thrones that I uh, would or have Or events. <laughs> or events? Yeah. Like the like, Red Wedding. I wish I had been at the Red Wedding. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the purple. Oh my god, I would, uh, I would have killed to work with Max von Schudow. Definitely. Oh my god. Definitely. I mean, I couldn't believe when he was, and Jim Broad, was it Jim Broadband? Those legends. <laughs> um, I would never went to Iceland. I mean, I've been there a lot. It's such a beautiful place. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Hi, Nicola. Thank you for coming, uh, spending uh, time with us today and yesterday. Uh, obviously, eight seasons. You've worked with a lot of directors. Um, are there some that stick out a little more than others, either just being a joy to work with, others that... I had a very, very close with. relationship with David Nutter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have an opportunity to see the, uh, the documentary afterwards? They focused a lot on David. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's... It, it, yeah, but, I mean, <clears throat> there so many... I mean, great directors. They don't... You don't get to direct Game of Thrones if you... I mean, they're all great. Um, also, um, no, but I mean, I, 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 they're all great. I mean, I'm looking. I'm gonna next year. I'm gonna do a play with Matt Shackman, who directed the Loot Train uh, sequence episode. What? Spoils of War. So, Spoils of War. <laughs> it was in season seven. It was episode something. Four. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> But he's, we're going to do Macbeth next year together on stage, so that's a whole different thing. Wow. But um, fantastic. Um, uh, it's uh, no, but I mean, if <laughs> I, I, I did a lot of episodes with with Nutter, and 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 he uh, he's a great. But also, I mean, then you then you think back, you go, oh, I also did really great stuff with uh, all of them. Alex Graves, uh, who did uh, you know the early seasons. It, is it ever where you're working with Nutter so much and then Sapochna comes in and it's a, it's a switching in gears? Well, that's also a very good director. And my point is not that suddenly it's a better or worse. It's just, right. uh, just a, a different You just work. have a... Sometimes you have... It also depends on what scenes you do. So, uh, like you do uh, episode two of season eight, which is all about characters and it's all about these very intimate moment, moments. You get... Uh, you have more time to, and you have to talk more to the director. When you do episode three, you have 60 extras, uh, 60 stunt guys, you have a thousand extras, you have wind machines, you have, it, it's a whole different animal. And the director can come over and say, well, when you go like this, I want you to think of, I mean, it's not, it, he has yeah. to conduct this machine. Uh, he's, a, he's a great guy as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And if we, there's, the line is so long, if we could try to limit it to one question, that would be great. Thank you. Hi, uh, Nikolai. I, first of all, just thank you for your performance. I used to say that it surprised me when Jamie turned from, uh, in the books, my 
most hated character to my favorite character in the third book, but in the show, it was really hard not to love him from the get-go, and that's uh, thanks to you. Thank you. And uh, my question is if you could just talk briefly about the wonderful uh, scene at River Run between uh, you and uh, Ed Muir and uh, working with Tobias Menzies, uh, who is just one of my favorite He's actors. He's a great actor, just a great actor. I love that scene because it... Uh, it uh, it shows the, uh, you know, you talk, <laughs> there's a lot of talk about the character arcs and, and change. I don't know, I mean, I think we all have, if you want to say arc, it's just life changes you. <laughs> and, and Jamie changed because of what happened to him, as, as we all do. Uh, he lost his hand, but he's still a soldier, and, and now he's the commander, and he has to take this goddamn castle, from, and he knows it's, it's in a way pointless, but he has to do it because he has to get back because bad things will happen back. He has this, he has a pretty good sixth sense about these things, I think. Um, he knows his sister is in danger. The scene is, is beautiful because it's, it's the old Jamie, not the old Jamie, but it's the core of Jamie where you know he, the reason he was such a good soldier, such a good fighter is that he understands fear and he understands um, and, you know, also, after uh, the scene with Marcella, <laughs> very, very brief moment of uh, fatherly love, uh, joy, for six seconds or whatever it was. <laughs> but the, 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 the fear of losing the most important uh, thing in your life, the, the most important persons, he understands the power of that, and he uses that to his advantage with Edmir. And I think the way it was written, that scene was just great, and it was such, such a... You know, as you say, he's a wonderful actor, and that just it was it was it was a joy to to to, to do, and it was it was wonderful for me because I loved the fact that he actually accomplished something pretty uh, amazing without uh, anyone getting hurt. Uh, I mean, you could say that Edmer was hurt in a psychological sense, but. He survived. He'll get over it. Did you, by the way, didn't you love that moment? I kind of love, I know it was, it was goofy, but I love that moment, the final, final scene in the, when he's saying, well, you know, I think, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, so going back to the, final season with Brienne and Jamie. That's one of my favorite like pair-ups is the two of them. So when things ended, of course, I was upset. But um, I was just wondering... How did you want it to end? Oh, well, that's a whole nother... There's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a different panel. <laughs> no, no, just very, very briefly. Just very, very... Just one well, sentence. How should it end? Okay, well, briefly, um, I don't think that their relationship should have gotten physical. I feel like their relationship was in a deeper, more like familial bond, more like brother right. sister -y. <laughs> Okay, the, the, reason, the reason I asked that question was, I was kind of setting you up for that response because <laughs> I think that's the, I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, but the whole, uh, I just love the whole online thing, petition, let's change it. And I was just thinking, yeah, it's great. We'll change it. We'll, HBO will fund it. If only, if, if just those 1.5 million people can agree on what they want. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so your question is, sorry. Yes. So um, if things had ended differently, I mean, of course, they ended the way they did, which is how it was supposed to be. But if they had ended differently where somehow Brienne didn't make it to the end of the Game of Thrones and Jamie did, do you think that he would have found a way to honor her memory the way that she found a way to honor his. What? Well, I, 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 I absolutely. Or do you think he would have? I think he would. Been so back to Cersei that it would have been. Well, I think that he kind of never. No, because he, you know, he when he was with Cersei, he, you know, he gave her the armor, he gave her his his, his sword. He, I mean, he never. It wasn't like he was like, yeah, don't know you anymore, bitch. <laughs> I mean, it's it was never like that. So I think. I, th I think he would, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. 
So I'm asking you this question because you're probably one of the only actors that has come to a con that could answer this. Is there anything, just anything, insights, secrets, or funnies about the season one, episode one pilot that never aired that you could tell us? Well, the <laughs> well you know, we, we saw it. You know, we, we right, that's why yeah, I'm asking. Yeah. Um, it was, a, it was a, a very exciting moment and experience. And uh, uh, what can I tell you? I mean, there's, <laughs> there's so I mean, I kind of wish that they would release it so you could have that moment, but it's never going to happen. <sighs> Just the wigs alone would, would be... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, no, it's disturbing. There's disturbing scenes in there. I mean, yeah. The scene, <laughs> the scene where they push Brian out the window, the, the one that's in that, that's disturbing. I'm so happy that's never to be seen by anyone. Wow but I can't give you anything because someone will hate me for spilling the beans. <laughs> okay. You'll have to uh, use your imagination. No, that was good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I'm a high school theater teacher, and I would love to share with my students your process for how you create your characters, if there's a specific theory or technique, or if you have your own way of doing that. Um, I... No, I don't have a specific uh, method um, as right. such. It kind of changes uh, information, as much of information I as I can get, uh, be it. And of course, it changes from if you play a, a real life person, uh, if you play someone um, who lived, you know, 500 years. I mean, there's always research. Um, if you play um, um, a convict and you've never been to prison, you have to educate yourself. Right. If you play a soldier, and you, all these things. It's a, the more information I can get, the better. Uh, and then, of course, the script is the, the Bible. That's where you keep just, and I can not read it enough times. So it's just re repetition. And, and of course, it's the very simple, uh, use your imagination. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm a bit shy, so bear with me. Um, I was wondering what was the hardest or most challenging scene for you? Uh, well, thank you for, uh, for the question. Uh, I, um, <laughs> in a way, the, fi the scene with the Euron Greyjoy, the fight, uh, the last uh, season. Uh, I, I love all that stuff with fighting. And that wasn't really it. It was more the fact that I've at that point I'd seen so many of my fellow cast members rap, and I knew what was coming then. And that suddenly it was everyone's going to get together, and that's going to be okay. It's a serious rap for Nikolai, and I dreaded that moment. So not because I was, I just didn't want to start bawling or crying in front of all that, because because it's not sad. It, it's not a sad thing, it was just a, I kept, I've been trying to hold on to the idea that this is just another job. And here I am in front of all you guys. So, <laughs> so it's not just another job, but, but, but just because it has to, you can't lose sense of reality. So that was, that was actually hard, uh, that final moment. It sounds stupid, I know. No, it's not stupid. But, but uh, thank you for your question. Thank you. We have time for just about two more questions, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. I know. So. They, but they're going to be really good questions, though. So with 10 years of this story that you've portrayed and all the memories and, that you have, how do you separate that from your day-to-day -day life? Like, are you ever in the supermarket? Like, which wine would Cersei pick? You know? <laughs> uh, it just it would mix, like, in my head. I don't know. Do you ever No, you, you're addiction? describing a, uh, a mental disease. <laughs> <laughs> a, a mental affliction. No, 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 I've never had that moment where I was in, uh, in the supermarket going, I wonder what Cersei would want. <laughs> but that's just because Jamie wouldn't go to the supermarket. Uh, that's true. No, I, I don't have... Uh, it, it, sometimes you... Uh, no, I don't... Uh, 
I, I'm very dedicated to my job and I spend a lot of time, but, but I don't think that I've uh, lost my mind. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Last question. Um, okay, so Jamie Lannister is one of my favorite characters in literature because he's so wonderfully complicated and conflicted. Um, and he's human in ways that a lot of hero type characters are not. And I was wondering what are some of your favorite qualities or um, what did you appreciate about the character of Jamie? Well, I, I, well, you kind of nailed it there. I, I, that's kind of what I love about the character. And I, I think, it, but it goes through most of the characters in Game of Thrones is that they are um, human beings, and I think that's why we love the show. Not because of the dragons and the supernatural and all that. That's just plot. That's just excitement. But it's about these are real people. With the, even though they live in a castle, you can still identify with because at the core is about these relationships and is it trying to navigate that world uh, and once you're given the the rules of the characters if you will the setup okay you have this guy he's a he's this first you think that you know them right so like with Jamie yeah well he's the arrogant asshole who likes to kill young children and, and is, is morally corrupt because he's having sex with his sister. So we, we got him over there. What a disgusting piece of shit. And then you get, because of the, you have a lot of time, you get to know these characters and you go, oh, hang on a second. Maybe it's not just that symbol. Maybe, you know, it's the good old don't judge a book by its cover thing, right? And we all know because there's nothing worse. I think we all know that. There's nothing worse when people jump to conclusions about us based on our appearance about you know, something we said mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Well, you said that thing, that means that you are this person. You go, no, I'm, what are you talking about? I tweeted that bad joke. Don't ever do that, <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, you know, but, but that's what we love about this, exactly what you said. Okay. Um, the, you, uh, the, the, the grays, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, thank you to everyone. Thank you to Nikolai Costa I think you're going to get in trouble right. if you don't take that last question. All right, we're going to take this last question. All right. All right, thank you so much. My name is Brandy, and I'm from Detroit. Um, one thing that I wanted to say was when I saw that scene where you pushed Brand out the window, I had just had my son, so I was like two weeks in, and I literally scissor kicked you in the back of the head. Like... <laughs> so many times. I remember waking up my husband like, do you know what I would have done if somebody, so I went through all of that. So my question is, have you ever had like a crazy fan blame you for something that like, look, it's not me, it's my character, like moms like me? Um, <laughs> I mean, I had, <laughs> no, but I had a guy who was like, after this season came up to me, uh, did anyone ever try to punch you in the face? I said, what? That would have been me. Because someone should punch you in the face. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but someone should punch you in the face. I guess he was a, 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 a what's it called, Bramy? Bramy ship? He, well, that's what he was about. What, what, are you, what are you doing there? What are you showing me? Are you showing me something? Oh, no, I'm videotaping. Oh, you me videotaping. talking to you. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm, this is going to be, I'm giving this to my son when I die. This is like everything to me. <laughs> but thank you for letting me ask my question. You are amazing. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. And thank you all thank for coming. You, everyone. Thank, thank you. So much. Much. Thank you.